On the 28th of September, the Intrust Super Cup Grand Final will be played right here, the home of Rugby League in Queensland, the Suncorp Stadium. Ten years ago, it was the epic Grand Final. Burley Bears up against the East Tigers. 17 minutes of extra time it took to separate the teams, and it was one of those Grand Finals that everybody still speaks about. Gentleman to my left here played a significant part in that day. Dane Campbell, how are you, mate? I'm well, Frankie. Thank you very much for having me. Well, a lot of people think you kicked that grand final to make the, the sorry, you kicked that sideline conversion to make it 18 all and went on to win the grand final, but unfortunately it wasn't quite like that. No, no, I uh, often get people confused with the, the kick as it was and uh, thinking that that won the grand final and sent us into the glory days, but unfortunately, no, mate, we went that 17 minutes and got pipped at the end with a uh, heartbreaking try to Big Shane Flanagan. So let's talk about it. To get to the point of uh, the conversion from the sideline, a little chip kick over the top and your winger, Steve Beatty, comes through, takes the ball. It was about 40 metres out here and talk us through that and, and what transpired. Yeah, I, I guess it, that's late in the game. I think on the clock it might have only showed 10 seconds to go and I guess at that point it's just you know, do something that you hope might work. And from memory, I think Steve was inside and Steve was you know, great at just the little things that um, no one else could do and he was actually the right winger and he popped up over on the left hand side of the field and I think he must have called it and I thought well why not we've got no other shot and just put the kick in and fortunately enough it found a bit of space and Steve was good enough and you know I think Steve probably at that stage would have been 70 kilos and but he acted like he was 100 kilos bursting through the middle of the two defenders and streaked away and I think on the vision it shows that we're all pointing him back under the sticks but he just decided to stick out wide unfortunately and then we were left with a kick. And that kick you're about 22 metres out, 8 metres in from the sideline which becomes right dead on the sideline later on when you're on the drink later. And the regular kick, it wasn't you, you'd been injured before that and you hadn't been kicking for a few weeks. Talk us through what the next bits happened there. Yeah, well, Michael Pierce was our goal kicker in the grand final and he'd taken all kicks up into that stage. And I guess I'd kicked majority of the year, so it wasn't unfamiliar that um, I'd be handed the ball at some point. But then there was uh, the opportunity of Pierce. He, I guess we, we scored the try and we sort of looked at each other and Pierce had the ball. And I said to him, mate, do you want it? And he sort of looked at me with these eyes that said, no, do you want it? And I was like... <laughs> Right, yeah, give me the ball. And I guess that comes back to, you know, I was always told as a young guy growing up that, you know, the big games, you know, as a halfback, you want the ball in your hands and there was no probably bigger moment in the game. I relish that, so it was enjoyable. There's a little bit of a scoop there for you. Have you ever shared that with anyone before, that that's how, the, how you came to kick? Because the commentators speak about it, Warren Bowl and David Wright speak about it. The, you know, the kick is changing here this afternoon, folks. Yeah, well, I've watched the vision back a couple of times now, and it's actually interesting because it pans to Michael Booth, our coach, and uh, I think he mutters a few expletives under his breath, like, what the hell's going on here and why is he taking it? But, um, yeah, fortunately enough, the result was uh, was one that went over the post, and, you know, I guess in hindsight he was probably cheering. The Tigers on his shoulders. Yeah, and Pierce hasn't uh, had such a good record with his kicking in the uh, final series, so the pressure coming on... Dane Campbell, who would want it? Time is up. This kick to keep the Tigers' hopes alive in the grand final. To level the scores, time is up. Dane Campbell, difficult one. He's got it! He's we go to the sudden death extra time. Incredible Unbelievable. kick. Unbelievable. Well done, Dane Campbell. Oh, yes. That's pressure. That's nerves of steel. That is That water might be killed. Cool. As you look out here at the spot where it is, obviously the stadium's changed a little bit and it was fairly new at that stage. What memories come back to you as you, as you think of that spot? Yeah, it's interesting, you know, 10 years on, which is incredible in itself to think that that's how long ago it was. But on this side of the field, actually, we uh, there wasn't any spectators. They were all over on the um, on the far side there. And I think the only memory is I looked around here and it was just myself, Tony Maxud and the ball boy. So <laughs> they're, they're really... It felt like you're at a, any suburban park and just, you know, oh, well, we're, we're having a training kick here. But, you know, fortunately enough, when it did go over, the roar went up and, you know, great memories. And, you know, that was one part of the game that was very fond. And obviously the next 17 minutes, probably not so fond. The atmosphere was set then, as you said, it takes 17 minutes to separate you. There were some significant parts in that extra time. One, no one knew how long it was going to go for. They were thinking of turning the lights on here. But it was probably a couple of the pivotal bits. You had some big names, Darren Smith, Steve Renoff, both injured in that extra time. 
Yeah, both of them got injured towards uh, or Smithy in the extra time and, and Pearl just prior to um, the end of the game. So being down to 15 on the bench and you know, you're 18 minutes into extra time and the legs were just jelly, like you could hardly run. And I just remember when the, the try was scored, just bending over and obviously there's that point of um, disappointment, you've lost the grand final, but the other one was just sheer exhaustion, no one could hardly move and it just they're scattered everywhere, it's just incredible to see on the vision now that everyone was just so flat out and I guess for us, you know, we we're only a bunch of kids really, you know, like there was myself and Isaac Kaufman, we would have only been 21 at that stage, um, Lee Coggill was the same, Dallas McIlwain was only a year older and you know, a lot of those guys went on to to feature in um, NRL fixtures over the, the, the next few years post that game and that was probably a, a really good significant moment that I guess looking now with all the affiliations to NRL clubs like we didn't have one at that stage you know it was just a bunch of blokes that probably come from all different backgrounds for an opportunity to play Q Cup that year and fortunately enough we gelled and you know there was opportunity post that game. Famous names everywhere as well on both sides. Plenty went on, as you said, to play first grade. There was a famous name that had a couple of cracks at field goals as well, and one of them was a, a fair way out. Yeah, Lockie, um, Matt Lockie, he decided to have a crack, I think, from about 55 metres at one stage and probably didn't get too much traction, but at least he had a chop, and that was just what it was. It was just, hey, go down the middle of the field and let's try and have a pot from wherever we can. And I think we had probably three shots, and, and they were probably two or three themselves, and they just kept spraying and myself I had one shot and it just sort of faded right of the post and you know hindsight again is a wonderful thing but yeah it'd be lovely to think that that would have gone straight between the sticks. And to, and what are you doing day to day these days you look fairly fit. Oh mate I, I try at uh, probably not as fit as I'd like to be but living on the Sunshine Coast beautiful uh, environment up there and and have done so now for probably the last six or seven years and enjoying my time up there, still involved with footy and, and coaching the local rep team up there. So uh, I guess, yeah, for me now, you know, I've got a, a passion for East and I played for Redcliffe as well, but now I, re I would love to see the Falcons going really well. I'd love to see, um, you know, those guys really take off over the next few years and the affiliation they've got with Melbourne now hopefully will be a good thing for them and the region moving forward. Only place to be on the 28th of September's right here is the Intrust Super Cup. Sizzles into September and we'll see who can light up the final series.